show is all about the latest breakthroughs. Turns out one of the biggest discoveries is actually this tiny. See how small that is? This little chip may be the next big thing, and it sounds like it's right from a sci-fi movie, but people all over the world are implanting these into their wrists. So I asked my producer, Dean, to find out more about this cutting-edge technology and what it could mean for your health. Whether it's our smartphones, our watches, our fitness trackers, or our Bluetooth headphones, it's clear that technology is not just part of our lives, it's running them. It's how we buy things, watch things, how we date, stay safe, even how we travel. Paul? Cool. We're so attracted to our devices that they're basically becoming a part of our bodies. But what if they really could become a part of our bodies? Well, guess what? They can. Meet the RFID microchip. This tiny chip, which can be implanted into your wrist, yes, I did say wrist, uses short-range radio frequency identification, similar to the tech used to track your pets or your phone. Once implanted in your body, it could identify you as you pass through the airport, open the door to your home. It could even be used to buy groceries at the supermarket. Now, your driver's license, passport, keys, and wallet are all inside your body, contained in something the size of a grain of rice. I know it might sound like sci-fi, but it's not. 10,000 people have already been chipped and the number is growing. The possibilities are limitless, especially when it comes to your health. Imagine your rush to the hospital without any identification, but with just one scan of your chip, doctors know your name, date of birth, medical history, insurance, blood type, allergies, even the medication you're taking. This chip in your wrist won't just change your life, one day it might just save it. And that's why this little RFID microchip is the next big thing. It happens in seconds. Moms and dads, you know that feeling. Your child gets lost in a store, maybe just wanders off for a second or two. Your heart stops, though. Panic sets in, and you think the worst. It's happened to most of us, but what if you had a secret weapon, an extra layer of safety, so to speak? How far would you go to keep your children secure? Would you be willing to microchip them? Experts tell us the technology already exists. Turns out one Bay Area mother is all for it, and she shared her story with our Melanie Michael. Hey guys, good evening to you both. You know, chances are if you have a four-legged family member at home, it's already microchipped. And if the technology exists to save Fido in an emergency, what about microchipping your child? Before you say, no way, I would never do that, hear one mom's story. It's the longest two seconds of your life, and it's absolute panic. Back. We've seen it in movies. This is my daughter! Over and over again, children gone missing. It's terrifying. For Stephanie Rodriguez Neely, life is busier than ever with four children, including a newborn. She knows scary situations can happen in an instant. And for her, it has. If it'll save my kid, um, there's, there's no step that's too extreme. Stephanie's teenage daughter is a special needs child prone to wander off and trust strangers. For that very reason, Stephanie wholeheartedly welcomes microchipping a child. If a small chip the size of a grain of rice could have prevented a tragedy, I think most parents, you know, hindsight would have said, I wish I would have done it. A well-known technology expert out of Boston tells us microchipping poses little to no health risks and would act as a barcode of sorts. Without question, it could save a life, uh, reunite a family, uh, find a missing Alzheimer's patient. I always tell people, as long as you're doing what you feel is best for your child, you're not really wrong. And guys, this is what we're talking about, the microchip. I don't know if you can see it in my hand. It's the size of a grain of rice, very, very small. And the expert that we spoke with actually tells us that barcodes were introduced in the late 1960s. And back then, people thought, uh, this is way too invasive and too weird. And now barcodes are so commonplace that we don't even think about them anymore. The expert tells us this will happen sooner rather than later. We could see those microchips in everyone. Well, that's interesting to think about. Melanie Michael live in Tampa. Thank you for that report.
Hi, my name is Charlie Warzel. I'm a senior writer with BuzzFeed News. And uh, in order to see what the future of money looks like, I decided to live for a month uh, just paying for things with my phone. And somewhere along the line, I ended up getting a microchip implanted inside my hand to see if I could be uh, the first person in the world to uh, pay for something out in the real world using uh, just their hand. Sweden happens to be way far ahead of the United States when it comes to uh, getting rid of cash. You could actually implant an RFID NFC chip in your hand. So take a deep breath with me and exhale. And so I figured if I could put it in my hand, maybe I'd be able to pay for something with my hand. That was it. Breathe. Yeah. <laughs> Keep breathing. How's it feel? It's like pinchy. Any phone would recognize my hand as a Venmo app. <laughs> Takes a second. Here we go. Sir, you're good to go. That was so sick, dude. That's amazing. That was sick. Yes! That was gnarly. That was that insane. Was I can't believe he just paid with his hand. Like, you just literally put your hand up, and you're good to go. Like, that's crazy. My hand is paying for everything today. I would bet that in about 10 years, it's kind of abnormal to carry around a wallet that's just stuffed full of cash. Um, I got rid of cash um, for an entire month. I uh, didn't use any physical cards, so just digital means I found a guy who is chipping people in Sweden, and I, I went over to Sweden and he did it. You're gonna see a new generation come up, get more used to this, and I think that, you know, that generational change will really make the difference. Microchips implanted in human bodies could transform the way we tackle many everyday tasks. Some workers in Sweden are already developing and volunteering, volunteering rather, to have chips injected into their hands. The technology can make some tasks easier and reduce the amount of personal items employees need to carry. Employees gain access not with key cards, but with a wave of a hand. A microchip implanted in his hand makes his life easier. It replaces all the keys and cards that used to clutter his pockets. I use this many times a day, for example, to unlock my smartphone. It felt pretty scary, but at the same time, it felt very modern. I love gadgets, and uh, now I kind of feel like I'm a gadget myself. The next generation of chips will save lives by monitoring health and fitness. I'm fascinated by this. I've, I've always thought it was the future, that it would carry your medical records, mm -hmm. that it could track your fitness, that it could that you could buy your groceries with it. Right, like an Apple Pay or something. I'm all in. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I'm skeptical. I'm scared of becoming a cyborg, but if you guys go first, I'll join you. Now, the first in the U.S. to offer its employees microchip implants. Experts say it won't be long until microchips are used as passports, driver's licenses, even to pay for things like public transportation transportation. This company says it's about to become the first in the U.S. to offer microchip implants to its employees. You heard that right. Microchip implants under the skin. They're about to do this to more than 50 of their employees. It's the next thing that's inevitably going to happen and we want to be a part of it. The concept is pretty simple. Just like how you can buy something nowadays using your phone, what if you could use a microchip inside your hand instead? I'll hold my hand up, just like the cell phone, and uh, it will pay for my product. Instead of a credit card, Correct, your hand. because my microchip is now my credit card. More than 53 square market employees are having them implanted starting next week. Okay <laughs> now, in case you're wondering, Lindsay, each one of these chips, it's about the size of a single it's grain tiny. of rice. It's tiny, just one little grain. Did they offer you one? Uh, they did. They very much wanted me to come back next week when they're putting them in employees yeah. and get one. Still not sold, but I'm a little closer to being sold than I was when I walked in. Get faster from the vending machine. Sure would. All right, now we need to upgrade the vending machines. Yeah, right. really. All right, I thank know. you, Josh. Sure. All right, this may be the first time a U.S. company is using the technology, but it's already being used in Europe. A company in Sweden offered more than 100 employees the opportunity to get those microchips earlier this year. The company Epicenter Stockholm says phone and Internet browsing history poses more of a threat than the chip. Would you get a microchip implanted in your hand for work? <laughs> More than 100 employees at a Swedish company named Epicenter are doing that, saying it streamlines office life. You can even buy food at the company cafeteria. Now some employees are actually getting microchipped. I can't wait till this starts here at CCO. About 150 workers at the Epicenter Startup Hub in Stockholm, Sweden, 
decided, let's do it. Let's get this microchip. It's about the size of a grain of rice. So it's pretty small. It doesn't hurt. You barely feel it. The chips function as kind of a swipe card. So, you know, we all have those swipe cards, yep. like in your, you have it in your purse or in your wallet or you in your pocket to get in the building. So, you know, you just go up, you just stand by the thing and a it works. Wave. Yep. It was brilliant. At first, I was completely against it. But, you know, I was thinking more about it and just the convenience of not having to carry anything to just walk up to a door, it opens for you. Yeah. Just. Today, I recently got a new phone, and I realized how much I appreciate that thumbprint and how much I took it for granted because I had to reset my settings and type sure. in the four digit code, and oh, oh my no. gosh, it took up so much time to do that. Four digits, who's yes. got that kind and, of time? And now I'm like, oh, what would I do without the thumbprint? Yeah. So now you're ready to go I'm the next of, step. I'm kind of ready for it, you know? This? Let's see what other possibilities are out. It's great, you never have to worry about losing ID cards, you know, the for security it, purposes. Security, it's fantastic. Uh, look, I actually uh, am intrigued by the, techno mm -hmm. the technology, and you think about all the things, especially like passwords, all the passwords you need to have. Mm -hmm. Or if even you could just have to open a, your car if you forget your yeah. keys. Or something. All right, this next one's a little creepy. I want to I see what you guys think. Mm. Okay? It isn't, it isn't. <laughs> I heard about she, this. She, <laughs> Brooke likes this idea, which tells you a lot about Brooke. Listen to this story. Okay, so if you forgot your ticket to a, a game, a soccer game, in Argentina, okay. it's not a problem because you can use the microchip that's been embedded under your skin by the Crazy. team. An Argentinian yeah. soccer team planning experimentally to this point to offer supporters a chance to implant a microchip in their skin, lets them walk right through, like easy pass in your right. car. It's an easy pass. You just walk right into the stadium. Like the easy pass is in your car, not in your wrist. That's see, correct. But see, I'm not really thinking about it in terms of sports as much as I would love to put one in my kids. <laughs> Just to know where I, they I are. Know, like, I know it's creepy and really futuristic, mm -hmm. but I, my dog has one. Right. And she ran away and ended up, like, so we live downtown, and she ended up, like, in Harlem. Mm -hmm. And they, somebody did deliver her to a, a facility, a, a place, and they scanned her, and then they found us. And I honestly am not completely against chipping my children. Have you, have you wow. proposed this to the I, girls? I, I haven't. No, I thought I would do it in their now sleep. They, now they know. <laughs> I would, I would put it. Just, mom, uh, yeah. like, mom what just was that? Oh, I don't know. Sleep. It's a the <laughs> <laughs> There's something about it. I don't know about the scanning and that the people are like, oh, it'll help you in the subway. You're going to be programming right. them to eat their vegetables with a button. But it's going to happen, though. Yeah. Placing a microchip under the skin to get you in your door, to start your car, or maybe give your doctor your medical history. Or what if your child were to disappear? Would you be willing to place a chip in your child? if it might help them bring them home. Barry Davis recently looked into what all this technology is about and the possibilities of this science. According to the National Center for Missing and Exploited Children, more than 2,000 children are reported missing each day. Most are found, some never are. But what if there was the technology which could help bring those children home? And that technology was no bigger than a grain of rice. Oh gosh. <laughs> He's on the swings. <laughs> oh hi. <laughs> yeah, that scared me. It's something most every parent has felt. That sick panic. You're watching your child play, having fun. You turn your head for just a moment, and they're gone. My stomach drops, I feel nauseous and dizzy, and I imagine all of the horrible things that could happen. Tris um, Dickerson is the mother of a rambunctious three-and-a-half-year-old who has no fear of anything or anybody. And it, it scares me. It scares me so much. Someone would just be like, hey, I have candy, and he'd be like, heck yes, candy. We've been microchipping our pets for years, so why not use that technology to protect something far more precious? It's technically realistic. Stuart Lipoff is an electronics engineer who's watching the microchip industry closely. He says by placing signposts or portals like this handheld unit for animals in key locations, you could track someone. Some people are already placing microchips in their hands, which help them control everything from their computers to opening their front doors. And most of us use microchips every day to open doors to work or buy lunch with a debit or credit card. It's only a matter of time before people realize how beneficial it could be, and not just for convenience, but in what literally could be a life-saving instance. I might be one of those moms in a heartbeat. I think I'd have them chipped. Just so I would feel safer. 
Microchip implants are a popular way to keep track of pets. Now, some people are getting them, but for a different reason. Uses it to open his front door and manipulate a smartphone. And it turned off my ring. Instead of a key card at work. We don't want to carry devices. We want devices built into us. Radically improve humans through digital implants, even genetic manipulation. For now, a common procedure, implanting programmable RFID chips under the skin. Tiny implantable digital tattoos. They'll authenticate credit cards, track your location, even collect health data. They've been chipped, buried in their hand. The chip can do tasks for them. Phil's chip has been programmed to work as a key. So, as you can see, that uh, will open the door for me. It's entirely benign. Holly uses the chip in her hand to direct people to her web page. It can help because if someone's passed out on the floor, you've got no idea of their medical history, you can scan their hand and you've got all of their history, you've got all of their details. I think something like that is where this technology is going to go and it's, it's brilliant. And this is the size of the chip the biohackers have inside them. Would you want one? Well, currently today, I've programmed it to send you a text message. Tanya does. She's a tech expert at a university and believes it's really important to be a pioneer human with a chip. In the future, these chips could be a bit more versatile, more powerful. Now, for most people, a key or a security pass is enough to get into the office, but now a Swedish firm is offering an alternative for workers. It's a microchip inserted into the hand under the skin. The choice of being chipped, which will then give them access to various of the services without you know, flashing an ID card. I looked at this, saw a few people using it and thought, what have I got to do? I've got to be chipped. <laughs> and here's what it happened. It became clear to you. I'm told it isn't going to hurt. Not quite as bad as I expected. I'm now chipped. You're chipped. This is going to work. Go. Yeah, it's going to work. I'm a cyborg. Yep. It was a bit like you know, going to the doctor and having an yeah. injection. This phone, it actually reads the chip. Is enough. this the way of the... I mean, are we all going to go around with chips in us, uh, in, you know, say in 50 or 100 years' time? Is this, that this... is the theory. When the tax man says, we want you chipped for the inland revenue, when Google and Facebook say, hey, wouldn't it be a good idea mm. for you to be chipped? Are you going to leave that in there? Uh, I, I'm pretty relaxed about it. I've been augmented and I feel good about it. <laughs> well, that's fine. <laughs> Rory, thank you very much Thanks, indeed. Rory. I've just been chipped myself. Now, you've been chipped yourself. Where's your chip? Yeah, I have a chip right here, which I use to access the entire office. So let's see if we can get into this particular This is uh, how I do it. OK. No need through. for passcodes. So instead of having some clumsy device in my pocket, I just put my hand on the reader. If we help show people that this is really not that complicated, it's making our lives easier. It really is almost like the Matrix. I know. You just walk up to your like, boop. I know. In. I, I don't know. Would you ever get it? I, you know what? I don't think so. At this yeah. point, a lot of our viewers had some really good points about you never know what's going to happen right now. Yeah. Very interesting. Thank you very much, Aaron. Well, you can have a microchip implanted in your thumbs, making wallets a thing of the past, sure so you don't have to worry about leaving them behind. I've got a small implant about the size of a grain of rice. Can I, I feel it? A bit hard to see. Yep. Um, you can push it around oh, a bit. You can really want. feel it. Main reason I've got it is to interact with technology. So uh, I've got my phone and I can interact with it and I can change the information that goes onto it. Payment technology, geofence off the nursing home. Mm. So if that person left, it would notify someone and then tell them where they might be. These are the types of things you can do. So there's, you can put your Wi-Fi password on, so if someone yeah. comes to your house, they can mm. tap on. Um, there's things like launching applications, GPS coordinates. That's another feel of it. It's there quite you go. amazing. It's <laughs> it is really cool. It happens in seconds. Your child wanders off and panic sets in. But what if you had an extra layer of security inside your child? A woman in Australia is now a combo of Darth Vader and the Terminator, thanks to some special implants. Here's an x-ray of her hands. Those circles are microchips. They allow her to unlock doors without using a key. Kind of like the Force. Uh, she can also access her computer without a password. Hmm. Mm -hmm. Problem solved. Mm -hmm. A real-life Cyberman, a scientist with an implanted computer chip. A wave of his digitally enhanced hand and security doors magically open. Only he can operate his phone. In future, chips will be used even more widely, perhaps even as memory upgrades for the brain. One of the first companies to start chipping its employees on a large scale. You had to use a card to be able to purchase it. But what if there was a way that you wouldn't have to do any of that, where you could be microchipped? First company in the U.S. to give microchips to its workers. The chip implant uses the same technology as mobile payments like Apple Pay. 
started voluntarily putting chips in its workers recently. The chips have the ability to store medical and health information. Big Brother is watching. There's a nationwide push to start tracking where children are during school hours. They would basically be microchipped. The technology is known as Radio Frequency Identification System, and it's soon going to be used at some schools across the country to track students' whereabouts. That's right, students will be microchipped. At least their identification cards will, allowing administrators to track where the students are at all times. The FDA actually approved microchips that could be implanted into the human body for medical purposes. In Mexico, kids are already being microchipped as a form of anti-kidnapping prevention. More than a hundred law enforcement officials in Mexico are having microchips implanted in their arms. The chips allow a person to be scanned. This will be one more tool in the fight against crime. Now Mexico's attorney general and 160 of his deputies have had microchips implanted in their arms. A scanner reads each chip's identification number to verify an official's security clearance. The microchip is tamper-proof, it's secure. The next step, say researchers, is developing an implantable chip with a global positioning system to track people miles away, whether kidnapped or lost. Life in the U.S. in 10 years' time. The year is 2017. You're rushed to a hospital, unconscious with no ID or medical history, but thanks to a microchip under your skin, it's all there. Microchip commitment. Microchips that are implanted under their skin. I can log in, so it authenticates me like a home automation system knows that it's you and sets lighting and music and that kind of preference. I suppose there will be a lot of future applications. Maybe we'll all have one of these under our skins uh, in time. <laughs> it's a brave new world. <laughs> How far would you go for better security? How about an ID implanted in your arm? You had to have a computer ID chip implanted under your skin or you'd be fired. Well, we're not there quite yet, but one Ohio company is doing something that has some people wondering if we're headed down that road. There's my chip right there. So you can actually see it. Well, you're the guy with the chip in your arm, aren't you? You know, run across the scanner so we can see if we get a, a discount on groceries. Big Brother's to be watching you over this. Um, she got the implant for medical reasons. Just go ahead and lay down up here for a minute. So doctors can pull up a record of her allergies in an emergency. Like it or not, we're in that brave new world. And it might not be long before your boss is literally getting under your skin. In medical news tonight, a chip the size of a grain of rice could save your life. New microchip technology now makes it possible for the emergency room staff to find out about your medical history at the touch of a computer key. He had it implanted in his right upper arm. The chip could help emergency workers. Anyone can get the chip. The comfort of being able to scan me and figure out who I am outweighs my concern for privacy. The system will most likely start to include more and more people in those communities who will want the chips. Oh, interesting. Story. Everybody could have one of those yes. one day. Keeping their loved ones safe throughout the illness. Now, we told you before about a high tech microchip. One of the greatest fears for those caring for someone with Alzheimer's is that their loved one will get lost, show up at a hospital, and no one will know who they are or what's wrong with them. And we have reported on this tiny new microchip that might be able to help. Well, now for the first time with great, great controversy, patients are lining up to get them. One of the first patients at this Alzheimer's center in Florida to be implanted with a microchip. Drew. If you get lost, we can find you, and also if you ever have any medical problems, we'll be able to get some information about you. It's almost a little like Big Brother, but when you think of it, it's really useful to be able to see how someone is uh, getting along and gather that sort of information. I don't think there's anything to worry about. And he decided to get the chip, too. Okay. Now, 34 patients and caregivers got the chip yesterday. Dozens more will get it in the next week. Convex would be forced to have a device implanted. Why not track sex offenders using a tiny radio chip? Instead of ankle bracelets, sex offenders might have something like this. Implanted chips that go under the skin. They will replace ankle bracelets. Police could then track an offender from a remote computer. They've been used to track criminals in the UK, even get this, school children in Japan. I wouldn't mind having something planted permanently in my arm that would identify me. And implant the chip and just show us how this works. After 9-11, I was really concerned um, with the security of my family. And you never know when an accident is going to happen. And the Vera chip can um, give that medical information uh, instantaneously and be able to save my life. 
this can help save my life in case of an emergency. Global positioning chip, you know, where mm -hmm. you could be read by satellite where you are. Would your family do that too? Um, I think we, we definitely would consider doing that. 